Well, this morning we're ending this year's uh, worship and ministry series with a wonderful topic. And maybe just for those who haven't been with us, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we see that God worked into these three people. They were not special in any way, but what was special about them was the experiences God gave to them. And so this semester we covered Abraham in the original language, Abraham means father of a multitude. Okay, are you okay? Father of a multitude. And we see how Abraham was called by God, chosen by God. Abraham, in every sense of the word, became a father. And he experienced God as the father. He had to learn to take God as his source, to learn to trust in God and not to trust in himself. And then we came to Isaac. Isaac, we see, is a picture of Christ, the son of God. How Christ was born according to promise, not according to the flesh. You remember that? And then in Genesis 22, Isaac was offered by his father Abraham on Mount Moriah. And that's a picture of how Christ, right, was obedient unto death, obeying the will of the father, and then returned to Abraham in resurrection. And last week, Larry shared with us from Genesis chapter 24, how Isaac being married to Rebekah is a picture of how Christ ultimately will marry the church, his bride. Well, this week we want to see another aspect of Isaac, which I believe will be wonderful and encouraging, especially in this time of finals. Being New Testament Isaacs by living a grace-enjoying life. So on the one hand, the Lord is typified by Isaac, but actually we have to see Isaac is also us as believers. We can also be an Isaac. And so I just like to bring to us this definition of grace. Grace is the triune God received, enjoyed, dispensed, and worked into us that he might be our life, our life supply, and our everything. Have you ever heard that before? I don't know what your thought of grace is. Um, you know, I learned this recently, that every epistle of Paul ends with grace. Grace be with you. Grace be with all the saints. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Grace be with those who love our Lord Jesus Christ. And at the end of the Bible, the Apostle John, he ends the Bible in this way. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all the saints. Amen. And I just wonder, when Christians read that, what their thought is of grace. Is grace merely unmerited favor? Is it just a gift from God? Some kind of outward blessing? Well, I've brought this verse to our attention before, but according to the Bible, we have to realize grace is actually the triune God himself. And so that's what Paul experienced. Eventually he said, for me to live, it's not me, but it's Christ. That's in Galatians. But then in 1 Corinthians 15, he says, it's not me who live, but it's the grace of God, which is with me and in me. It's not me who served. It's not me who labored, but it's the grace of God. And so what is grace? We have to realize grace is the triune God himself. And I want to highlight a word here, and that's the word enjoy. Did you know our God is enjoyable? Our God wants to be enjoyed by us. And when we see this, our entire Christian life will be revolutionized. One day when I saw my God wants to be enjoyed by me, my whole concept changed from doing from trying to be a Christian, to become an enjoyer of God. And so 
I'm going to show you through three characteristics of Isaac's life, how Isaac shows to us one who lived a grace enjoying life. Okay. So the first one, Genesis 25, five, Abraham gave all that he had to Isaac. It was said in Genesis, Abraham was a wealthy man. He had the donkeys, camels, cattle, male, female servants, gold and silver. And all that eventually went to Isaac. Well, you know, the Lord said something very similar in John 16. He said, all that the father has is mine. You see the connection? Just as Isaac received everything from Abraham, so the Lord, everything he had when he was on the earth was the Father's. He received everything from the Father. And then when we come to us, you know, in Galatians 3, it tells us, okay, who's Abraham's seed? We've been talking about this. You know who Abraham's seed is. It's Isaac, right? Galatians 3 also will tell us Abraham's seed is Christ. The letter 329, it says, if you are of Christ, you are Abraham's seed, heirs according to promise. So who's Abraham's seed? Is it Christ? Is it Isaac? And is it you? Yes, right? We are heirs, H-E-I-R, heirs according to promise. And in 1 Peter 3, 7, it tells us, primarily, we are heirs of the grace of life. Heirs of the grace of life. Heirs of the triune God himself. And one day, God will open our eyes to realize everything we ever will want to be, everything we want to have, actually is ours already in Christ. How about we can all read this verse together, 1 Corinthians 1.30. But of him... So this verse shows us we are in Christ. Uh, you know, if I put this paper in this folder here, in a sense, you can say whatever the folder experiences, the paper experiences with it. You know, if I drop the folder, the paper drops with it. You see, if I lift up the folder, the paper has the same experience. Well, according to the New Testament, the, the Bible tells us we have died with Christ. When Christ was crucified, we were crucified. So you see, one day God will open our eyes to see we're not trying to overcome sin. When I was a young Christian, I was, uh, if only I could overcome that besetting sin, you know? You know what I'm talking about? If only I could die to that sin. Well, we have to have our eyes open to see, actually, we've been crucified already. We're dead to our sins. And oh, I wish I could just live to God. If I could just give myself a little more to the Lord, then my life will be okay. Well, the Bible tells us we have been raised with Christ. We can live with Christ. And we're seated with Christ in the heavenlies. You see, everything we ever will want to be as a believer, it's actually already ours, according to the New Testament. It's a spiritual divine fact. Okay. <clears throat> Just a little congestion. I'll, I'm okay. <clears throat> okay. So now I have to take some time to cover the second aspect of Isaac's life. Isaac's birth and growth. Um, and my focus for this portion of the sharing is Isaac uh, was one who grew in grace. And so the burden for this part, brothers and sisters, is that we have to see, we have to grow. As a Christian, we have to grow in the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so, um, you know, it's not finals yet, but maybe I'll just quiz you all really quick, okay? Is that okay? Uh, where in the Gospels do we see something of the Lord's early life and childhood? Which Gospel shows us something of the Lord's early life and childhood? 
Yeah, Luke. Okay, so the survey one got it. Okay. You know, not much is mentioned of the Lord's early childhood, how he grew up. Most of the Gospels begin at the time of the Lord's public ministry when he was already 30. And in the same way, actually, Isaac, not much is mentioned of his growth, his birth. But one thing it tells us about the Lord as a little child in Luke 2, it says Jesus grew and advanced in the grace manifested in him before God and man. So you see the Lord Jesus grew in grace. And so the characteristic I want to point out here in Genesis 21 is that Isaac was born and raised up in a place called Beersheba. And at that place, okay, the name is significant. Beersheba means well of a covenant. And that place had a well. And eventually Abraham planted a tamarisk, tamarisk tree. Okay. Okay, I'm going to ask another question. Let's have the ones who are not serving answer. Okay. Where else in the Bible do you see the imagery of tree and water? Revelation. Yeah, where else? Genesis. Yeah, there's actually more than that. But, you know, I've been talking to a number of you uh, students this semester, and I know many of you have essays, right? A number of essays. And you know, any essay, you have an intro, a conclusion, a thesis. And that thesis tells you the purpose, right, of that essay. Why are you writing the essay? You all know that, right? <laughs> well, you know, let me tell you something this morning. Actually, God, the Bible, is an essay from God showing to us what is God's intention for man. And so from the very beginning of the Bible, in Genesis chapter 2, it says God put man in the Garden of Eden. And you know, Eden means pleasure. You see, from the very beginning, God destined man to be an enjoyer. One day our eyes will be lifted up. We will be unveiled to see. God just wants us to enjoy him. And so in Genesis 2, in the garden, there was a tree of life and a river. And then in Revelation, an angel showed John a river of water of life and the tree of life. So, you know, don't you all enjoy a good meal from time to time or a good drink? Isn't it marvelous? God didn't just tell you to depend on food and drink to live. I mean, just imagine if the food that was given to you was the food given to like the astronauts or those, you know, in the army on the battlefield. Would that be very enjoyable? Right? Don't we all enjoy a nice meal from time to time? Well, that's a picture, you see, that God wants man to enjoy him as food. Did you realize, according to the Bible, God wants us to eat him and to drink him? God is edible. <laughs> you think I'm heretical? <laughs> you think I'm speaking blasphemy here? Actually, the Lord himself said it first, not me. You see, John 6.57, the Lord said, As the living Father has sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who eats me, he also shall live because of me what lord and people were stumbled they were like what is the lord talking about cannibalism here but no no the lord is saying he's the divine life and we can eat of him and then in john 4 14 maybe before i go to john 4 14 i, I just want to tell you what john 4 13 says the lord speaking to a woman at the a well actually it was isaac isaac's well and he said Whoever drinks of this water shall thirst again. And then in John 4, 14, he says, Whoever drinks of the water that I will give him shall by no means thirst forever. But that water will become in him a fountain of water springing up into eternal life. And so you see in John 4, there are two kinds of water. This water causes you to thirst again. The water the Lord gives us 
is a fountain gushing up in our being unto eternal life. You know, in Genesis 21, actually there were also two wells. Did you know that? Isaac was born by a well, but also, you remember Ishmael from a few weeks ago? Ishmael? He was, uh, he was also uh, a son of Abraham, but born by the improper source of Hagar, the concubine. And it says in Genesis 21, Ishmael also grew up by a well. But let me tell you, that well was near Egypt. And that well was in the wilderness. Eventually, Ishmael became a hunter, a killer of life. And Ishmael eventually married someone from Egypt and was joined to Egypt. And when you read Exodus, you'll know Egypt signifies the world under Satan's usurpation. So I'd just like to ask everyone here this morning, gently, what is your source? What is your well? Where do you get your enjoyment from? You see, if we drink of this water, we will thirst again. And not only that, the more we drink of this water, the more it kills the divine life and our enjoyment of grace. And the more we're led away from God and into the world, into Egypt. But the more we drink of the water that Jesus gives us, the more we have grace, the more we grow. And so, you know what, eventually Isaac, what happened to Isaac was he became an offering, right? Abraham offered Isaac on Mount Moriah. His life was for nothing else but to be a satisfying offering to God. And you know, Mount Moriah, if you study the Bible, you'll realize that, that is the place where eventually the temple was built. You see the connection? The more we drink from the proper source, the more we become those who can satisfy God. And in the New Testament, we know the temple is the church of the living God. The more we drink of Jesus, the more we can be those who participate in the building up of the church. Yeah, so we have to take care of what we drink from, right? What's our enjoyment? Is our enjoyment something worldly or is our enjoyment the Lord Jesus? And so this is a question we all have to consider. What is our source? Um, okay, I'm doing well on time. <laughs> so, okay, finally, this last characteristic I want to talk about. Isaac lived a restful and peaceful life. Yeah, that was Isaac's life. You know, um, okay, because you're all dear to my heart, I like to give you a little sneak peek to next semester. Are you ready? Next semester, we will be covering the God of Jacob. You know who Jacob was? Oh, when you study the life of Jacob, oh, it was complicated. It's like even more complicated than Abraham. I think Paul told us a few weeks ago, Abraham was involved in World War Zero, you know, <laughs> the international conflict. But with Jacob, oh, you know, the, the wives, the children, oh, the conflict, oh, he was crafty. Jacob, even you can consider him an evil person. And eventually God had to lead him through so many experiences. And by the way, as Abraham shows us the experiences of God the Father, Isaac shows us the experiences of Christ the Son. Jacob shows to us the dealing and discipline we need from God as the Holy Spirit. And so Jacob, eventually his person and his self-confidence was broken so that his being could be wide open so God could come in to fill him with the Spirit, with himself. Okay, but when we read the life of Isaac, it's, it's like when I'm drinking here, it's like water. It's bland. You know, Isaac's life was so mundane. Actually, you read Isaac's life, you realize he didn't say much. He didn't do much. He was just receiving all the time, just receiving from his father. I mean, Larry shared with us last week, did you catch it, what happened in the marriage? I mean, what did Isaac have to do to get his bride? Uh, you know, yesterday there was a wedding, John and Stacy, they're going on their honeymoon now, but they mentioned at every 
kind of transition in their courtship, there was, what's the word they used? Uh, a hump, a hump, you know, like a, something they had to overcome. But Isaac, what did he do to get his wife, Rebecca? He just, you know, in the field, just, you know, resting. And toward the evening, he just looks up and there's a camel's coming and Rebecca's on the camel and he gets married. <laughs> Have you ever heard of a wedding that simple? Okay, but it's a picture showing to us. Isaac was one who enjoyed grace. And to enjoy grace, we need to also be those who live a restful and peaceful life. In Philippians, it says, in nothing be anxious. Is anyone anxious for their finals? It says, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God can guard your hearts and your thoughts in Christ Jesus. You see, this is a, a characteristic of one who enjoys grace. You're resting. You're peaceful. You're not struggling. You're not fighting. You're not trying to be a Christian. Actually, you just let go. You realize everything I have is from my Father. I don't need to worry. I don't need to strive, be anxious. All I need to do is receive from God himself. And I'll tell you, someone, you just look on the streets or you know, even in your classes, anytime someone is not supplied, they're not a happy person. You know, during dead week, I heard a lot of complaining and moaning and groaning, but you know, that's just what we are when we're not supplied, right? When we're not under grace, everything under the sun bothers us. Everything under the sun irritates us. But when we enjoy grace, everything is fine. Everything is enjoyable. Even Paul and Silas, when they were in prison, not a very pleasant situation. They could be singing hymns of praise to the Lord. They were just there resting, enjoying God in prison. You like that? Is your final a prison? Well, learn to enjoy God as grace. Um, anyways, I think that's all I have for you this morning, brothers and sisters. But may we be those who are satisfied with such an ordinary, even mundane life. Lord, I'm not here for something spectacular. I just want to be day by day under the divine dispensing of grace. Lord, I just want to be an enjoyer of grace. So simple. And maybe just at the very end of this worship ministry series for this semester, what if we just pray together? Is that okay? We just pray for you all. Lord Jesus, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, you're our grace. Thank you, Lord, you want us to enjoy you. Lord, we just want to be satisfied living an ordinary life under the divine dispensing of grace. Lord, we pray especially for all the students as they're coming to their finals. May they be real Isaacs, resting, enjoying, oh, peaceful. Your word says, and nothing be anxious. Oh, we claim it. Lord, it's our portion. It's our inheritance in Isaac, in Christ. Lord Jesus, continue to bless each and every one of us, even as we go on break to enjoy you more and more as grace, even day by day to grow in grace. Lord Jesus, we just tell you we love you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Okay, I'll stop here. And all the other